here with Rob Gearing, and, and Rob's just going to show us a little bit um, about the Spartan bipods. Now these are, are all carbon fiber. You might have seen it on my YouTube channel. I use a, a Spartan Javelin, and they're absolute quality bits of kit. What I love about them is you can get the little adapters that you can put on every rifle, so you have one bipod that fits all. Um, so Rob's going to tell us a little bit more information about what's about. Absolutely. Well, good to meet you. Um, look, the nuts and bolts of it are the Javelin. Um, it comes in two sizes at the moment. It will come in three. This is the standard size, but we're doing a stubby one for the air gunners okay. because you've got that gas tank underneath. Um, so we've been asked to make one like a, about three centimeters shorter than this. Um, the stuff is made out of five layers of carbon fiber, Japanese. The head is 7075 grade alloy. It's a solid billet, a machined alloy. You'd break the le head before you broke this carbon. The stuff is bomb proof. The legs are extendable. Um, and then the tripod legs will go in the bipod legs so you can make this effectively a seated bipod if you're squirrel bashing or rabbit shooting and you want a seat. Um, really goes on the rifle very simply. There's a series of adapters. This is the one that comes in the kit um, and it'll take the bipod in two directions. So that's now in hunt mode so you can transit and cant over. Um, if you want to do longer range shots, you just simply turn it round and put it in backwards. So now it's locked in place. Yeah. There is a lever lock, and my view is the lever lock is much better than the thumb lock. Um, because especially with your air guns, they can be quite heavy. Yeah. If you take that thumb nut off and put the lever lock on it, you can lock that cant block down really thoroughly. You'll never do it with the thumb knot because, as I say, it's a solid billet uh, of aluminium. Mine's a, mine's a thumb, lock, thumb lock, and I, I have to find it's always a little bit of movement. Send me an email, I'll, I'll send you a lever lock. But these are all the adapters, so there's a huge option of adapters that will fit pretty much most rifles or air guns. Um, most people tend to migrate straight onto these gunsmith adapters, if you see that one just oh, underneath yeah. Yeah. here. Yeah. You can bond it into the stock or put it under your gas tank, and then it's a nicer answer because it's actually an integral part of the stock um, you have to keep your sling swivel stud then obviously but those are those people that are buying and changing guns all the time this is easy yeah, yeah it's easy and now we do a guide adapter as well which actually you don't even have to remove your QD stud you put that straight over the QD stud um, so the professional guides can rig their clients rifles up for the system yeah. clearly when you've got that there you can then use our tripod unit as well, which is also a bipod, just goes in, it's really simple, just engages on the magnet, so it's a very quick system to use, and there really is no weight to that. Yeah. Again, really good, strong quality carbon. We're changing, we're upgrading the leg locks to do an external twist lock, because we don't like these. Um, but the head is, again, 7075 grade alloy. It's really everything's made. If we could make it better, we would. Yeah. There is um, this bipod here. It's a different tool, really. It's something that we developed for the military. Um, it's called the Spark 300. It's really a get you out of trouble bipod. Lobs on the rifle. I worked a bit with the SEALs on the west coast of America, and they wanted a, well, they phoned me about this. And I said, well, it's, it's a hunting bipod. And they said, yeah, well, we hunt people. So I went over there and spent a bit of time, and really that was the development from that. And so the Spartan 300 does a couple of things that the Javelin won't do, um, and that is it can stay under the rifle, but it can be pulled off quickly. But this is not a hunting tool, as my view. This will do two things that the Spartan 300 does not do. One, you can lock it in position, and two, you can lock it down with a lever lock. This, once you put it on there, you know, it's a pretty fluid system works very effectively for what it's meant for. So hunting animals, hunting people, basically. And now we're doing a whole military line, so we're doing a lot more with the AR platforms. But exciting story, little British company. We're just four years old today, really, because this was our first launch four years ago. And um, we've sold 25,000 of these. All right, we're just getting into America now. We make them for Blaser, Sauer, Strasser, Weatherby, Kimber, Cooper, um, Christian St. Arms in the States. Um, pretty much all the top rifle manufacturers in the US are now taking that as a branded bipod to sell us up with their hunting rifles. So we're hugely excited about that.
Great. Yeah, thank you very much, Rob. Does that make sense? Yeah, brilliant. Good. Nice to meet you and Adios. keep the show up. Cheers. Good stuff. Cheers. Hi, I'm John Hatton here at BSA Guns booth at the British Shooting Show at the NEC. We're launching our brand new Defiant Bullpup product here. It's a BSA side lever, 10 shot magazine, regulated action inside and our world renowned Cold Hammer Forge barrel. This has been a closely guarded secret protected by the Peaky Blinders that you'll see looking either side of me wearing Garrison Taylor's 100% British made clothing. Come and see it here. So we're with Charles now on the Night Fox stand and as you all have seen in my videos I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of, the, um, of this unit. Now this one um, I did a review on if you remember and there was a little bit of a little, some things that could have been improved on it. So I emailed Charles and um, he's taken them on board and he's made a, well, a, a cracking job of this new one from what I can see here. Um, oh, thank Charles, you. Do you want to take us through the, yeah. uh, the new one? So this is the uh, 120R. Um, it uses the same camera sensor and screen as uh, our very popular uh, 100V model, uh, but it uses a rechargeable lithium battery uh, and it can record footage. Um, the fact that it's lithium battery uh, means it's much lighter, it's about 350 grams compared to about a kilo uh, for the previous one. Um, and recording footage is a nice addition as well. Uh, what's more, you mentioned in your previous video you like to have the uh, screen uh, adjustable brightness uh, option uh, which we've added to the settings uh, so you can uh, set it to your preferred screen brightness and then it will save it uh, for, for later use. Cracking. Um, so I'm going to hopefully get hold of one of these to test on the channel um, but I've been using this one since I made the original review um, for spotting rats especially around the farmyard and it's cracking so I really can't wait to uh, have a look through the new one at night. Well, thanks so, Andy. Thank, thank you very much. Many Charles. thanks. Thanks for stopping by. It's all right, no Great. I'm here on the day state stand with Terence. He's the sales manager. That's correct, yeah. Um, and we've, we've got the new Red Wolf. It's quite an impressive looking tool. Um, a little bit different to what we've seen from day state in the past. Yeah. And Terence is just going to tell us a little bit about what, what's new with this Well this tool. is our limited edition. Um, we have carbon fibre shroud adjustable stock, adjustable cheek piece. It's an electronic gun, as you can probably see um, from here. So it's based on the Pulsar electronics, yep. um, but it's been completely updated for the Red Wolf. So whereas the Pulsar, everything on the control was controlled by the safety switch. Now it's all, the safety switch is mechanical, so it's no longer electronic. Okay. So all electronics have been updated. Um, side lever action, so side lever cocking action, yep. which can be swapped either side very simply, like all of our side levers can. Um, we're looking at a shot count of around about 500 in 2.2, 450 in 177. Um, so to start with, it'll come in this series, Rosso edition, one of 200. Yeah. Um, then uh, we'll have a walnut stock followed by a laminate stock, uh, and they'll both have bottle and the highlight available as well. Now we've got with us again um, Terence, and, and he's going to show us uh, the new Procop. Phantom Sniper? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's our regulator version, so you have the two gauges in there. Um, very similar to the old Bantams that they were, but it's come on a little bit. Redesign on the shroud, so much thicker shroud now, as you can see, suits the rifle. Picatinny rails from everywhere, um, so you can attach everything you require uh, for hunting, whether it be infrareds or scopes or whatever you want, really, or bipods. Uh, a more balanced stock, so it's a synthetic stock, chunkier handle. Um, it's still in testing. This is our prototype, which yeah. is why this is all 3D printed. So this is a prototype model. Uh, we borrowed a hugged shroud for the end just to give it a bit of chunkiness. Yep. Um, but yes, it's uh, it's certainly catching attention today. It looks like a bit of a beast. Um, it is a bit of a beast, to be honest. Um, we're expecting it to do really well. Yeah. Uh, we saw great success with the Compato target at the end of last year. I mean, we went through the last few weeks six weeks we went through six months supply yeah. and quarter short we thought we'd have compatible targets till we switched onto these models but it was so popular it just sold out very very quickly um, this is what's coming we're expecting it beginning of april um, can't wait to have it out there on test shot counts 177 it's testing around about 470 at the moment and 122 around the 520 mark um, but they're not confirmed figures yet. We're still on prototype versions, still on prototype breaches. 
and things are still being tested so before it goes out there yeah. Uh, yeah. and will it come with a hug it silence on the end it won't come with a hug it silence it will have a half inch UNF on the end yeah. so you can choose what you place there and have a screw cap for the end of it yeah. but obviously it comes with the thicker shroud which acts as a silencer in itself yeah. so there is that already fantastic cheers no problem <laughs> Um, we're with Nigel now at Ridgeline, and um, here we've got one of the the Ridgeline sniper bags. Um, that is what it is. It's sniper yep, bag, that's yep. sniper bag. Um, and I've, I've just had a quick look at this, and I'm really impressed with the quality. Now Nigel's just going to go a little bit more in depth on um, on what this bag entails. Okay. Right. So this is a sniper bag. It's available in two different sizes. You have got the 47 inch and also the 54 inch. And the original concept behind the bag was to allow people with full bore rifles to be able to store a rifle in a good quality bag um, with the moderator and scope and bipod attached and that was the main purpose behind this bag. The quality of it is excellent, um, we haven't compromised on quality at all, we know you guys are spending a lot of money on your gear in terms of rifle, scope and other equipment that you carry so therefore you need maximum protection. Um, the last thing you want is strut breaking, zips failing um, and you know dropping your gun and damaging it. So some of the main features then is you've got your drag handle and then you've got two storage compartments. Um, we also know you guys are carrying a lot of gear around with you when you go target shooting. So there's plenty of storage compartments here within the bag. A large one here which is removable and then also another one on the bottom there um, which is fixed. It's got um, securing straps to keep the bag closed and you've also got a carry handle just here and also two straps at the back here which will also allow, enable you to carry it in a rock style so rucksack style fashion handle also got securing tags and then on the inside you've got a cover for your um, zip and that stops water from ingressing but also you've got a two-way zip and then inside the bag you've got this um, bit of protection here and that then stops the zip from scratching any part of the rifle or scope and on the inside you've also got securing straps you've got three so you've got two that you can use to secure the main body of the rifle and then one you can move up here which will secure the barrel into position but you've also got um, a boot in the bottom of the bag where you can put your stock which will keep the barrel uh, keep the gun nice and stable another feature on the inside of the spine you've also got a compartment to put your cleaning rod so as you can see the sniper bag nice and robust give you maximum protection for your rifle you know and importantly or more importantly protect your rifle in your investment for that money you spend on your gun when you go out field target shoot so it remains zeroed at all times so thank you very much Nigel for that it looks like a quality bag um, yeah, mega. Cheers. No worries, mate. Cheers. Yeah, I do the two kids' yeah, clothes before yeah. I even get the kids to school. Well, I think that one suits you, madam. Oh, that would be perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. You've got to keep it in your car. So we're with Charlie now on the shooting party stand, and we've got the um, the Lee Enfield uh, BB replica rifle, and Charlie's just going to take us through a little bit about um, about this rifle and, and what's you know, different on it to, to everything else that we've seen so far. Thanks very much, Andy. This is the new SMLE from Lee Enfield Guns, which will be sold exclusively through the shooting party and also available for your local dealers. It is a BB firing CO2 powered air gun. Uh, we aim to make it one of the most powerful uh, BB guns you have available in Britain or still conforming with the law. Um, it will feature all metal parts apart from the stock, which will be a dark walnut stain hardwood. Uh, the original slings fit, original bayonets fit, only the original scopes will fit as well. It's been reverse engineered from real SMLEs, so for that reason it's millimetre perfect size match for a real SMLE. Uh, retail price will start at £429 and it will come with our usual 12 month warranty. Thank you Charlie. Thanks very much Andy. I'm with Dan on the Crafty Rabbit stand and um, just going to take us through a couple of different knives and um, tell us what's different about your knives, that's right, no problem. These knives were designed by me originally. Um, we've, uh, they're handmade by our team of Smiths, so they are Turkish knives and they're made in Turkey. They're absolutely good quality. Uh, they are D2 steel, 
five millimeter full tang. Absolutely heavy duty, heavy duty, durable tools. That's all they are. They're not collector's items. They're not for open heart surgery. They're for the real bush craftsman. They are for the real worker who wants to go out into the into the countryside, who needs to skin a deer, rollock a deer, take its haunches off. So we'll carry on from everything from a Bowie to a, a, an everyday carry folder to a basic entry lock knife. Every single one of our knives has actually been tested to destruction and it's simply made for the guy who wants to go out in the countryside not a collector but wants to use a heavy duty tool that will never let him down best edge that you could ever get d2 steel is my go-to steel a little bit of a mix between high carbon and and stainless so the minimal amount of care will prevent it from rusting but you can always get a very very good edge on them anyway all our knives always come with a free handmade leather sheath as well Again, because we get them made in Turkey, the prices are unbeatable. The, the equivalent knife from a handmade uh, UK bladesmith will be £400, and we recommend go and buy one from a UK bladesmith for £400. They need the money, and they're great quality smiths. Ours are tools to be out there, used in the field. Come and have a look. Come and try one. promise you won't be disappointed. It's as simple as that, really. Great. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. So we're with Jamie at the uh, at the Hawk stand, and there's a, a new range of sidewinder the first folk we're playing scopes at. Jamie's just going to tell us tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Hawk have developed uh, a new range uh, in first focal plane. Uh, it's the Sidewinder thirties and also the Frontier uh, thirty scope range as well. Okay. The, the actual model themselves is a first focal plane technology. So ultimately you change the magnification, the reticle increases, but your point of impact remains the same. Okay, um, so this system here, we've got two models in the Sidewinder, which is the four to 16 and the six to 24. Um, and we also then do a five times optical system in the Frontier uh, versions as well. Okay, it boasts all of the, the features that you expect from the Sidewinder and the Frontier top end versions that we offer dual illumination system, locking uh, ocular um, eye, uh, eye system there as well and obviously like I said before offered in two vari variants 4 to 16 and 6 to 24. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Jamie. No problem at all. Cheers. Okay cheers. Now uh, another thing that's on the Hawk stand today is the new um, Hawk Night Eye 2000. This is a, a new night vision unit. And again, James is going to go through some of the key features. Sure, thanks very much. Yeah, we've now introduced this year um, a new night vision monocular system that has the capabilities of video and uh, capturing images as well. Five megapixel uh, opportunities in terms of the, uh, the quality of the picture. Uh, it's a 250 meter um, detection range. Okay, got an internal uh, memory system so you can go up to 32 megabytes to get you know, a huge number of video and uh, photo capabilities as well. Um, it's also got a built-in IR unit which will allow you to get out to those ranges of around 250 with the addition of a, a rail on the side so you can add extra IR source to boost the performance and everything like that as well. Yeah, brilliant. All right. Thank you very much. And that, that retails at? This sorry. retails at 249.95. Uh, now available in the UK, they're, they're available in most stockists now. Okay. Brilliant. Right. Thank you very much, Shane. From top. Cheers. Thanks. Okay, so this is our new product from Nightsight. It's called Dark Ops. And the main differences between the current Viper and the Dark Op Viper is this is more covert. Okay. For an example, if you shine this product into the camera, you will see the illuminator glowing from the front. This is what Prey sees looking back at you. And if we do it with the Dark Ops, you'll see that there is no light. It's 95% less visible to the Prey than a current model. Your product also retails at 399 and it's at 499 so for that 100 pounds you get covert to the front you get covert to the back because we have the dimming screen you get the rtac technology camera which allows you to one touch button record and speed focus so for the extra 100 pounds on retail nightside dark ops is a far superior model which is keeping us out shooting longer and more covert while we're doing it that's it So we're with Graham now and we're on the Sterling stand and we've got something very different here. This is a this is a twin twin piston recoilless rifle. That's right. If you can just tell us a little bit about it. Right, well as you as you say, it's a, it's a, it's a twin piston recoilless rifle and what actually happens as you pull the cocking lever, 
so there's a piston that moves that way yeah. and the other piston moves this way and when, when it's fully cocked this piston is held by the trigger and, and you can then put the pellet in comes the pellet and that comes back down again when you fire the rifle this this piston is being held back by by the cable through here so this is being driven forward by the, the power up here and this piston is being pulled forward by this cable so they meet underneath here so it's like two forces opposing each other so that's why there's no that's, that's the reason for it yeah um, now basically um, the safety catch is here yep. apply the safety catch trigger is safe off the will fire what I can do on this occasion I'll fire it empty for you if you like yep. okay so to show that it's recoilless alright that is yep okay <laughs> um, basically it's relatively well balanced the balance is actually in the, in the middle the balance is just about there really yeah. Um, it's yeah. only 40 cc of air so consequently only 40 cc of air is coming at the front so it's quiet which, which, you know, that's with no pellet in it um, I don't know what else I can tell you really and when will these be in production? Um, about 6 to 8 months okay. and what will they retail for roughly or do you not know that yet? we don't know for sure but I mean say 14, 1500 ish Okay. Very good, thank you very much, Graham. You're welcome, thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers, thank you very much indeed. Well, with Tony, um, again, a familiar face um, on the Sterling stand this time, and Tony's showing us the new uh, Webley Mark II with the Sterling badge, is that correct? Well, more or less, yes. It's a remake of the traditional 1930s Webley. It was a beloved gun for collectors and one of the most interesting uh, technical air guns of all time. Yeah. And it was expensive to make and difficult to make, and eventually, when the war came along, they stopped making it and they never went back um, but it has a huge following it's got some technical innovation here which is really quite unique so we thought we'd have a look at it and see if it was worth doing and we think it is we've managed to get the power up from the original six foot pound to nearly 10 and we're hoping for 11 by the time we put into full production yep. it's a bolt action brake barrel spring gun okay. load the barrel close lock it up and you're ready to fire. Yeah, it's different. Very different. A very interesting gun. It's got an awful lot of tension over the last couple of days. Beautifully made, and it's really just an exhibition of what Sterling could do. Yeah, it's a warm, nice warm-up stuff. Yes, on this it. one is two versions. There's one version which uses a more classic, traditional shape from the original gun. That's made by Form Stocks, okay. uh, down in down in uh, the West Country. And this is a Gary Kane version, giving us a higher cheek piece for a higher sight mm -hmm. and we can go in both directions we may offer both yeah that looks very nice and when's this going to be available to they've got some more production work to do to get the power up to where we need it to be yep. so we're in middle towards maybe early autumn late okay. summer this should be in the shops excellent and retail price roughly well it's going to be up there it's a lot of work and it's an expensive gun we're only going to make so many of them yeah. so we're saying in the stainless steel probably around about 900 pounds and in a blue steel maybe 700 that's got to be fixed it may go up it may go down depending on what the production costs okay. are going to be but if you like something it's a bit different a bit yeah. quirky yeah. and yeah. shoots brilliantly uh, as well. that's exactly right thanks tony cheers okay. Come on, Tony, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the camera's already oh, gone. Oh, <laughs> oh, <my laughs> <God>. <laughs> Back to your mark. <laughs> Summit at Eagle Vision now, and um, I'm just having a look at uh, another product that Masood has designed. Now, this one um, is the most solid uh, scope camera mount I've ever come across for an actual camera. Um, you can fit any camera on here and it'll work with a bolt action as well because you can rotate this to wherever ever you want it really. Um, so all it is, this screws on the back of a Hawk scope or you can use the um, adapter that you, that, that'll fit on any scope. So if you've got like a Nikko Sterling or um, whatever scope it'll work on there as well. So that's just a, a very simple bar, goes on the bottom of your scope and then you can just film through your, through your recording screen. Um, you can also get a sunshade on there. So um, any sunshine coming down, giving you a bit of glare, 
you just pop that on and, um, and eradicate that. Also, what Masood has designed are these very tidy magazine holders for the World Cup. So, your magazine um, holders just go in there. Looks like it's a simple uh, case of pulling them out. Uh, they've got a ball bearing on there, that the Wildcat makes. Um, and you can fit, looks like there's like four on here. Um, but I guess you could fit as many as you wanted. What he's also done is designed a half inch UNF adapter for the Wildcat. So any sort of half inch um, silencer can just pop on the end of there. But some of the stuff that Masood's designing is really awesome. A lot of the things in the pipeline as well that he's told me about, I'm really looking forward to uh, having a look at. I think it's going to make filming and making better quality videos a lot easier. So keep on out for that. Um, and if you are at the British Shooting Show in the future years, pop down to, to Eagle Vision and, and have a look. Um, also, Masood's designed um, these stainless steel uh, filling adapters really high quality, um, high quality threads. Um, I've tried a couple of them out, they're really, really good. Um, so if, if you need a replacement, if a seal goes in yours, you might as well just upgrade and get one of my suits because they're real, real tidy. Also, he's um, designing the, the silencer adapters for as many guns as he can. He's getting through, his, getting through them as quickly as possible. Um, but I think he's, is there seven, eight, is there eight, eight adapters? Seven. Yeah, seven. seven at the moment. Okay, so there's seven adapters at the moment. Um, to get a list of those, it's best just to visit the website. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, if you could check that out, that'd be great. Um, have a look at the other products that he's building as well. Thank you.